Tales. Episode 1 Gablia and the Turkish Fairy Chimneys. I'm sure you all know Gablia well. Her virtues, then, I need not tell. In praise of her, it might be said, she was exceedingly well bred. Well bred she was, yet talked too much. I think you may have heard of such. Chapter 1 Once upon a time, there was a very well-bred and charming young goop girl named Gablia. She always wanted to make everyone around her happy, and she was always very polite and said please and thank you. She thought of herself as a little fairy godmother that could make wishes come true with her magic wand. For the most part, the other goops enjoyed her company quite a bit, but they knew that once Gablia started talking, she wouldn't stop, at least not for a very long time. Gablia loved to talk, and she could spin a story out of any event. She always felt the need to release every thought in her head, even if no one wanted to listen. A trip to the ice cream parlor would turn into an hour-long story when told by Gablia. I went to go get ice cream yesterday with Never Share and Very Vain. I got vanilla, Never Share got Rocky Road, and Very Vain got bubblegum. I really wanted to taste a bit of chocolate, so I asked Never Share for a lick of his ice cream. And of course he said no, because he never shares anything. Then I decided to ask Very Vain for a lick of hers, but she was just so busy staring at herself in the mirror that she didn't even hear me. I just finished my vanilla and decided that next time I would get... Gavlia would just go on and on about the silliest things, and eventually the other goops had to tune her out because she became very tedious. One warm, summery evening after the sun had died down, Gavlia put on her favorite fairy godmother hat and grabbed her wand. She could feel magic in the twilight air, and she wanted to go catch some of it. She had often heard stories of a mysterious labyrinth hidden deep inside of the forest, and she was determined to find it. She set out on foot, and as she ambled through the forest, she talked to herself. I will find this labyrinth and make my way to the other end. There must be something magical on the other side. I wonder if unicorns will be there. Gablia's next thought was interrupted by the most regal mother unicorn and her baby foal that appeared in her path. She was stunned into silence by the appearance of the unicorns, but only for a moment. After several seconds of quiet, Gablia couldn't stand it anymore, and she started talking. Why, unicorns, you're so beautiful! I have never seen a mother and baby unicorn. Enchantment is in the air. This must be my lucky day. I'm on my way to find the hidden labyrinth because I'm quite sure there is magic on the other side of the labyrinth. And when I get on the other side, I will. The mother unicorn gently interrupted Gavlia and said, We can take you to the labyrinth entry if you will just listen to me for a moment. Gablia stopped mid-sentence and decided to listen, for as long as she could. Mother Unicorn said, Hop on my back, and we will take you to the entry, but... Before Mother Unicorn could say anything else, Gablia jumped on her back and started blabbing. Why, thank you! This is such an adventure! I've met two brilliant unicorns, And now I get to ride on you through this magnificent forest to start my labyrinth journey. What a glorious night this is turning out to be. With Gablia on her back, Mother Unicorn and her baby moved deep into the forest. Gablia gabbled the entire way and didn't give the unicorns a chance to say one single word. Several times Mother Unicorn tried to tell Gablia that once she went into the labyrinth, You could get lost there forever, unless you knew the phrase, Sim, Sala, Bim. 
that would force the labyrinth to release you. But Gablia was too busy talking and not listening. After journeying for some time, they arrived at the labyrinth entrance. Mother Unicorn knelt to the ground, and Gablia hopped off her back, gave a quick thank you, and started toward the labyrinth entry. As she entered, the baby unicorn called off after her. Don't forget, Sim Sala Bim! Bim Sim Sala? What is he talking about? Gablia thought to herself as she set foot inside the labyrinth. Chapter 2 As she entered the labyrinth, Gablia was too excited to think about what the little unicorn had said. She was in a magical maze of shrubbery. Every corner she turned led to two or three more paths, and she had to pick which one to take. She turned right, left, and center. As she made a sharp left, she saw a tiny cottontail rabbit disappear around the corner. So she followed him. Just as he turned the next corner, the rabbit disappeared again. Gablia began to run after the rabbit, but she couldn't seem to catch him. She ran after him deeper and deeper into the labyrinth until she was so out of breath she had to stop. Please, rabbit, please, tell me where you are. I just want to say hello. I've never been here before, and I'm hoping you can show me around. Gablia panted. There was no response to her plea. The rabbit didn't appear. Gablia was alone and deep, deep inside the labyrinth. She looked up as the sky turned darker, and fear started to creep over her. The feeling inside the labyrinth quickly turned eerie. Gablia turned one corner after another, but they all looked the same, and they never led anywhere. There was no entrance or exit to be found. Gablia was a brave little goop, but that didn't mean that she didn't start to feel a little bit panicked. Everywhere she looked, she was surrounded by labyrinth walls, and beneath her was the solid earth. It didn't budge. She looked up and was surprised to see a glorious starry night full of twinkling stars and luminescent clouds. As she gazed at the night sky, she was reminded of her magic wand that had a star at the tip. That's it, my wand, she thought to herself. Now, what was that magic phrase that the baby unicorn told me? Sala Sala Bim? Or was it Sim Bim Sala? Oh wait, that's it. It was Bim Sala Sim. So Gablia held up her wand and waved it around and sang out, Bim Sala Sim, Bim Sala Sim. As she did so, she felt herself floating up, up, and over the labyrinth. As she floated higher and higher, Gablia thought to herself, Did I say the right magic words? Chapter 3 Gablia floated up and up in the night air. It was cool and calming and swept Gablia right along. She gazed down at the ground below and watched as the landscape shrunk beneath her. She floated over oceans, islands, countries, and lights from below. Gablia quickly sensed that she wasn't being taken back to Goop World. I must have mixed up the Bim Sala Sala words, she said out loud to herself. What did I say and where will it take me? I'm moving so quickly. She talked to herself as she glided through the night and the darkness melted into daylight. As day broke, she looked around to see a sky full of hot air balloons floating above the most whimsical honeycombed rock formations. Gablia looked below at the most enchanting little world she had ever seen. How do I get down? She said out loud, talking to herself again. Just as she asked the question, 
a huge, brightly colored hot air balloon floated right next to her, and she heard a little voice say, Hop in! Gablia didn't hesitate. She hopped right in and found herself face to face with the funniest, cutest little creature she had ever seen. She looked like a miniature kangaroo with giant rabbit ears and was just a bit smaller than Gablia herself. Why, hello there! You're so cute! What an unusual but adorable creature you are! And thank you so very much for picking me up! What are you? blurted out Gablia. I'm Osamin, and I'm a Jerboa. My name means from the sky. What's your name? It's Gablia, replied Gablia without elaborating. What does that mean? asked Osamin. It means I talk a lot. Do you think I talk a lot? I don't think that's a bad thing. Hmm, said Osamin. I don't think it's a bad thing to talk, as long as you listen. Just try to listen more than you speak, and give your full attention to what's being said. Remember, you have two ears and one mouth. Gablia thought about Osamin's words for a few moments. She very much wanted to remember them. Where do you come from, and how did you get here? Osamin asked. Well, I come from Goop World, but I was wandering through a labyrinth, and I tried to get out, and I think I said the wrong magic words, and here I am. What did you say? asked Osamin. I said, Bim, Sala, Sim, replied Gablia. Osamin's eyes grew wide, and Gablia sensed something was wrong. What? What is it? she asked. Why do you look like that? Well, those are the words that are used by rock dwellers from the Pamukkale pools. If you say them, you will be drawn to the Pamukkale pools and turned into a rock dweller, and you will never speak again. Right now we're in Cappadocia, in Turkey, but there is an area hundreds of miles from here called Pamukkale, where the rock dwellers live. It's very beautiful, but I'm quite sure you don't want to turn into a rock dweller and never speak again. No, thank you. I really do not, said Gablia. Can't I just go back to Goop World right now? Will you take me? You will love it. It's a lovely place, and you could meet all of my Goop friends. Gablia started talking on and on, without giving Osamin a chance to say anything. Finally, Osamin interrupted firmly and politely. Excuse me, Gablia, but I need you to listen to me. Of course, said Gablia. She gave her full attention to Osamin as she didn't want to miss any important words or messages. My balloon is already moving in the direction of Pomacale, and I can't stop it. You are being called there because of the words that you said. But I believe there is a way that we can change things, so listen carefully. Gablia didn't say a word, and she didn't even think about anything else. She knew she needed Osman's help. Osman explained to her that they were floating in the direction of the Pamakali basins and that very soon they would pass over the fairy chimneys. These were small cone-shaped rock houses built into the caves and stones in the surrounding area. Gablia looked down to the ground below and saw giant rock mushrooms as Osamin continued. We're passing the rock mushrooms right now, which means that the fairy chimneys are coming up next. There are hundreds of chimneys, and fairies and sprites live in some, and rock dwellers live in the others. If you can knock on the door of a fairy chimney and a fairy answers the door, she can tell you the magic words that will let you float right over the Pomacali basins and right back to Goop World. But if you knock on the wrong door and a rock dweller answers, you will be taken to the Pomacali basins and live there forever and never speak again. But you only have one chance to knock so you must choose wisely. Gablia glanced down at the ground again and saw that they were now floating over the fairy chimneys. 
There were hundreds of them spread out everywhere. Each one had a tiny domed stone roof with doors and windows carved into the hillside. They were enchanting and adorable, and they all looked so similar. How could she possibly know what door to knock on? Chapter 4 Gablia pondered all that Ossiman had said as she looked at the fairy chimneys passing by below. After a few moments of silence, she turned to Ossiman and asked, How will I know the right door to knock on? By now, Ossiman had grown very fond of Gablia, and even though she was a talker, she was also exceedingly polite and kind. Ossiman wanted to help her, but she wasn't quite sure how. Gablia, I want to help you, but I don't know how. I'm not clever enough to know which little home has a rock dweller and which house is a fairy. I'm no good at guessing these sort of things. I don't have any special talents, said Ossiman. Oh, Ossiman, you're wrong. Everyone has at least one special talent, whether they know it or not. I know you can do something very special that almost no one else can. Ossiman buried her head just a little as she was very shy. I don't know about that, she giggled back to Gablia. <laughs> oh, I do, said Gablia. Tell me, what is it that you love to do? Well, I love to fly in my balloon. I love to play with my friends. And I love to hop high. Hop high? asked Gablia. Well, yes, I'm a jerboa, and I can hop high and fast. Let me show you. Ossiman started hopping around the balloon basket. She was quick and light and could hop right over Gablia's head. Gablia was impressed. You're right. You're an excellent hopper, and that is a talent that I don't have. We can use that to find the right door to knock on. Really? How? asked Ossiman in a delighted voice. Let's go down to the ground, and you can silently hop around the little stone homes. They all have windows, so you can hop up and look in the window, maybe even peek inside, until you find one with a fairy, and then I will knock on the door, said Gablia. You're so clever, Gablia. I love that idea. I will lower the balloon right now. So Ossiman and Gablia landed very near the little stone homes. Ossiman told Gablia to wait near the balloon as she hopped from home to home, peering in windows, looking for a fairy home. Ossiman began her search. She found a cluster of stone homes and began hopping up to the windows. She hopped up to see window after window. Some of them were closed with shutters, and she couldn't see a thing. In others... She saw nothing and no one. By the time she came to the 27th window, Ossiman was growing weary, but she knew she had to keep going. She mustered up her strength, took a giant leap, and peered through the tiny windows at the top of the door. Ossiman had only a brief moment to look inside, but in that moment, she saw a rock dweller look straight at her as he headed to open the door. Chapter 5 Ossiman was fast. She was a jerboa, and she could run and hop quicker than almost anyone else around. She had long hind legs with shorter forelegs and could hop like a kangaroo. She quickly took another giant leap and landed on the chimney top, just as the rock dweller creaked open his door. He poked his head out and looked left and right. No one was to be seen. It didn't even occur to the rock dweller to look up. He grunted, <clears throat> shook his head, and popped it back inside. Ossiman sat safely on his rooftop as she looked around. Not too far away, she noticed a charming little rock house with an open door that resembled a keyhole. 
Maybe that's the key we're looking for, Osamon thought to herself. So she took a giant leap from the rock dweller's rooftop and landed right in front of the keyhole doorway. It was open, so she quietly peeked inside. Osamon didn't see anyone, but she knew she couldn't go inside or knock on the door. Gablia had to do it. But she had to determine if this was a fairy home. She sat patiently and quietly, waiting for a sign. As she did so, she thought to herself that it was a good thing this wasn't Gablia's job, because she would probably talk out loud. Just as she was about to give up and continue on her hunt, she heard some faint, faraway flute music coming from inside the cave. This must be a fairy cave, but I must be sure, she thought to herself. Just then, Osman felt the tiniest change in the air. There was a slight flutter. This is it. I know it is. She turned around and hopped as quickly as she could to get back to Gablia. She arrived at the balloon to find Gablia patiently waiting. Gablia started talking immediately. Oh, Osman, this is the most magical place. I've seen mushroom rocks and more jerboas. I even met one and asked him if he knew you, and then I... Osman looked around as Gablia was speaking and noticed that the balloon was slowly drifting away from them. She interrupted Gablia. Gablia, I found a fairy cave, but you must come now. The balloon is moving towards the Pomacale basins, and the fairy could disappear. Don't say another word. Just follow me. Don't even say a word until you knock on the fairy's door. Gablia sensed the urgency in Osman's voice. She immediately stopped talking and followed Osman straight to the keyhole door. Go on, whispered Osman. Gablia bravely walked right up and through the doorway. She looked around but didn't see a thing. She heard the flute music in the distance, so she called out, Fairy, Fairy, my name is Gablia, and please, I need your help to get home. I'm so sorry to disturb you, but I said the wrong words in the labyrinth. And now the rock dwellers are sending me to the Pomacali basins, and I will have to live there forever and never be able to speak again. Please tell me the right words to get back home to Goop World. Gablia was so sweet and polite that the fairy didn't hesitate. Gablia watched in delight as a tiny white fairy with large butterfly wings floated right up to her. It was a magical moment, and Gablia's eyes grew wide. She had never seen a fairy before, and for the first time in her life, she was out of words. The fairy fluttered before Gablia and said, Sim Balabim. Then she turned and fluttered away. Gablia felt like she was in her own little heaven. She did a quick little twirl and then ran outside to find Osamon waiting. Oh, Osamon! I've met the most lovely fairy, and I know exactly what to say. Good, come quick. Look at the balloon, it's starting to rise up. We must get in it now, or we will never get you home. So Osamon and Gablia ran like the wind, racing past all of the fairy chimneys. Osamon arrived at the balloon first. It was already several feet in the air, so she took a giant leap up and landed in the basket. She quickly threw down a rope to Gablia, who climbed right up and in. Osamon, you're amazing, exclaimed Gablia. Osamon just lowered her head and giggled a shy giggle. (laughs) The two of them floated higher and higher into the clouds in complete silence. For one of the first times in her life, Gablia didn't feel the need to say a word. She just felt happy, and the silence made it even better. She looked down as they passed over the mushroom rocks and fairy chimneys. The landscape turned into a dry desert below, and Osamon and Gablia floated quietly for hundreds of miles. Gablia was gazing into the clouds and thinking about her adventure and the beautiful Turkish landscape when she was interrupted by Osamon telling her to look down. Gablia looked down to see the Pamakali basins below them, 
she saw a vast white cliffside with scallop-shaped basins of clear blue water and frozen waterfalls. The basins formed a dazzling white cotton castle. The landscape left Gablia speechless yet again. Osaman gently tapped her on the shoulder and whispered, It's time. Gablia turned to Osaman and gave her a huge hug and whispered back, I will never forget you, friends forever. Osaman shyly giggled. <laughs> then Gablia closed her eyes, held up her wand, and twirled around as she said, Sim Salabim, Sim Salabim. Sim Salabim. And before she could open her eyes, a white billowy cloud had picked her up and flown her back to Goop World, where she was gently deposited at the edge of the forest. Gablia opened her eyes and looked around to see the familiar forest entry. Was it real or a dream? she asked herself. No, it was real. I could never dream up a place as beautiful as Turkey. Or your boa like Usman, Gablia thought to herself. Then she set off to find her good goop friend Nevershair, but he was nowhere to be found. He was in outer space about to be swallowed by a giant lake, but that is a tale for another time. Hey there, it's Maria. Thanks for listening to Goop Tales. If you want to listen to another one, all you have to do is click on your screen and you can and of course don't forget to subscribe to goop tales and you'll always be notified when there's a new one